Welcome to this lecture series. In this lecture, we'll learn about uncountable sets and let us recall some relevant things. So we need to know what are infinite sets. We defined an infinite set as a set which has a proper subset of itself in bijection with it. All right, and then we showed that a set is infinite if and only if there is a surjection from the set to the set of natural numbers. Okay, and that's an if and only if criterion. Then we talked about countable sets. We defined a countable set to be a set which is infinite and, well, we defined a countable set as just a set which is in bijection with the natural numbers, but we showed that a set X is countable if and only if it is infinite and there is a surjection from N to X. And one can make this statement a little bit more beautiful by saying, in, instead of uh, saying that it is infinite, you can say that there is a surjection from the set X to the set of natural numbers. So that these two things kind of are opposite of each other in some sense. So it looks better. But this is what we ended up showing. Also in many textbooks, countable means finite or countably infinite. So what we have defined is really what is countably infinite, but I have chosen this terminology just for brevity. All right, so in our, the, the way we have defined a countable set, a countable set is not finite, but in many textbooks, countable includes finite sets. Okay. So here are two problems for practice. This one is marked as star not because this is hard, but because I'm going to use it. It's a very, very simple, trivial in fact, problem. Possibly I have given this before as an exercise, but doesn't matter even if it is getting repeated, not going to cause any harm. All right, so let's start. So first we need to recall the definition of power set. Fix a non-empty set X, then the power set of X is defined as the set of all subsets of X. That's the definition and the notation is this. That is the notation. Uh, you can also, yeah, okay, let it be. Uh, as an example or as a fact, you can try to think about this very simple fact that the power set of that thing has cardinality equal to 2 to the power n. Surely you have learned that in high school at some point. Okay, so here is our very interesting theorem that if we have a non-empty set x then there is no surjection from x to the power set x to the power set of x. There is no surjection from here to here. Very interesting. And the proof that we are going to give is, as far as I know, due to Cantor. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. So it, it will proceed by contradiction. Suppose we have a bijection. So fix a function. Sorry, not bijection. I meant surjection. So let a function f from x to the power set of x be a surjection. We want to produce a contradiction. And here is the very clever idea. Define the set S as those elements in the domain of S with this property, which do not lie in their own image. So first of all, this we need to be sure that we see this is a meaningful statement. X is an element of capital X. Fx is an element here and hence a subset of X. So asking whether or not X lies in Fx is a meaningful question. And the set S just collects those elements in the set X which do not lie in their own image. Okay, so that's the definition of S. And since f is surjective, there is some element y in the domain of f such that f of y is s. 
After all, S is a subset of X and hence a member of the power set. And now the surjectivity of F furnishes us with a Y such that F of Y is S. <clears throat> now there are two cases. Case 1 is that Y is in S and case 2 is that Y is not in S. Only two cases are possible. Okay, so in the first case, first case immediately implies that by definition of S, that Y is not a member of F of Y. Because what are the elements of S? The elements of S are those things in capital X with this condition. So immediately, if Y is an element of S, we have that. But what is f of y? f of y is s. That's how y was chosen. And therefore we get y is not in s. And that is in plain contradiction with this. So if we have y in s, then we have y not in s, and that is a contradiction. Alright, in case 2, very similar reasoning. If y is not in s, then y must be in f of y as an as just what we saw in the first case. By definition of S, we have this. But F of Y is S, and therefore this means Y is in S. And the same thing. We started with Y not in S and obtained that Y is in S, and that's a contradiction. So that finishes this proof. Uh, basically, as soon as we assume that there is a surjection, we get a contradiction, and we are done. So very nice fact, and now we can define, I mean we could have defined this before, but it is perhaps more poignant to define it now, the definition of uncountability. So a set X is said to be uncountable if it is not countable or finite, right? So in some sense, uncountability is trying to say that the set is bigger than the set of natural numbers in, in whatever sense. So very nice definition. It is unclear immediately from the definition if such sets exist, but they do. So before we give examples, let us, let us just kind of state a very useful reformulation of uncountability. I have stated it as a theorem. A set X is uncountable if and only if there is no surjection from the naturals to X. Right? So, why is this true? First assume that X is uncountable. Then X is not countable or finite. But if there were a surjection from the naturals to X, then, well, if x were finite, then we already have a contradiction, just by definition of uncountability. So x is infinite, but if we have a surjection from the naturals to x, by the infinitude of x, this means that x is countable. This is what we recalled in the beginning. So we would get a contradiction if we had such a surjection under the assumption that x is uncountable. Okay, that's one direction. And if there is a surjection from the naturals to x, then again, either x is finite or x is countable. So it cannot be uncountable, and therefore that's the proof of the other direction. You can fill in the details, I have said it, you can just write it down. And now we can have our example of an uncountable set. And that is the power set of naturals. The power set of naturals is uncountable simply because there is no surjection from the naturals to the power set of n as shown by this theorem. And now if we use this fact, this immediately tells us that this is uncountable. Okay. So let's move on. And the rest of the lecture is about looking at examples of uncountable sets. So first is very simple. It says that supersets of uncountable sets are also uncountable. Of course, supersets are in some sense bigger than their subsets. So if something is uncountable, then its superset should also be uncountable. Intuitively, you should have this. 
But a formal proof uh, can be obtained as follows. Suppose x is a subset of y and assume x is uncountable. And if y were countable or finite, meaning if y were not uncountable, then there would be a surjection from the naturals to y. So if there is a surjection from naturals to y, which is same as saying that if y is not uncountable, then what you can do is compose f with a surjection from y to x. So this double arrow just denotes surjection. Now since x is a subset of y, there does exist such a surjection. This is the star marked problem. Call this whatever, call this phi. So there is a surjection from y to x. And now compose these two surjections to obtain another surjection because composition of two surjections is a surjection. So if y were, uh, y were not uncountable, then there would be a surjection from the natural to x and hence x wouldn't be uncountable. But that would be in contradiction with the assumption that x is uncountable. So supersets of uncountable sets are also uncountable. And the second one says that if we have an uncountable set x and we have a surjection from somewhere to x, then this somewhere or this some set is also uncountable. So intuitively, if you have a surjection from y to x, in some sense y is larger than x, and uncountability of x should of course imply the uncountability of anything larger than it. So that's the intuitive meaning, but formal proof is very, very simple. In fact, it's the same proof as in the above. We already have a surjection from y to x. And... Um, we are assuming that x is uncountable. Now, if y were count, uh, y were not uncountable, then there would be a surjection from naturals to y. Call it f again. And this one, sorry, I cannot call it f. This is f, call it whatever you want, call it g. So, this is the surjection that is given. If y is not uncountable, then there is such a surjection. And therefore, the composite of these two surjections would again be a surjection. But then there would be a surjection from the naturals to x, contradicting the uncountability of x. So that's the proof of this. This contradiction shows that y is uncountable. And this one immediately follows from the previous one. It says that if we have an injection from x to y, and x is uncountable, then y is also uncountable. Intuitively, it is saying the same thing. If there is an injection from x to y, y is kind of bigger than x, and hence y should also be uncountable. But the formal proof is just, or one way to formally prove it is by using the fact that if there is an injection from x to y, then there is a surjection from y to x, and then use the second part. Okay. So we have three very basic examples. These are not very interesting. But now we can talk about some interesting examples. So first we will show that this is uncountable. And how we will do it is by showing that there is a bijection between this set and the set of all the subsets of naturals. So there we will establish a bijection between this and that. That is how we will do it. And, all right, so, so for, yeah, so before I even start with it, what is this notation? This is the set of all the maps from naturals to this set. That's what it means. Okay, so for any element of this guy, define, this as those natural numbers where f takes the value 1 which is same as the fiber above 1 just a notation so what is going on how are we going to think about f so when when you when you are given an f what you do is you list out all the natural numbers so on and 
below every natural you write the value that f takes on that natural so below 1 you write f of 1 below 2 you write f of 2 below 3 you write f of 3 and so on so you will get a sequence of zeros and ones what is phi f phi f is those natural numbers below which you end up writing 1 so it is collecting some natural numbers and rejecting some. So basically this is a subset of the naturals. So for each element here, we obtain an element there. To be a little bit more formal, define a function, capital Phi, this way. It takes a function here and outputs this particular subset. And you can easily check You can easily check this. And what we now have is a bijection between this set and an uncountable set. This set is uncountable, we have already seen. So we have a bijection between this and an uncountable set, and hence this must be uncountable too. That is the proof. So we now know that this guy is uncountable. Okay. So what about this guy now? So before we proceed, let me include one more thing oops sorry so we are going to say that this is also uncountable and this will be an exercise so this is an exercise it's actually a kind of a joke now well Basically, instead of 0, 0,1, we have 1, 2, and you should be able to immediately see why that doesn't make any difference. So this is also uncountable. And now let's talk about that. Why is this uncountable? So what we will do is we will create an injection from here to there. And now since this is uncountable, this will automatically be uncountable. What is the injection? Define. So for S, In this, define this guy. This is a function from naturals to naturals as psi of, of n is equal to f of n. This may look like a joke, but uh, I mean, what can I do? Essentially, psi f is just f. All we have done is append or amend the target of f. Essentially, it is just f. It is behaving exactly like f. Okay? So that's, that's psi f. So for each function here, meaning, sorry, for each element here, which is a function from naturals to that, we have created a function or an element in this guy. So basically, we get a map. Psi capital Psi like this as F mapping to Psi F that's our map capital Psi and you can easily check and this is injective and as soon as you do that this becomes uncountable because this is uncountable so that's it you can write down all these steps and now finally, let us talk about this guy, which is most interesting. So why is that uncountable? What we will do is we will create an injection from here to there. Okay, so how do we do this? So for an element f in... Yeah, so before even I continue, I have to explain what is this. This is the set of all the injective maps from naturals to naturals. So it is a subset of that, and hence it is not immediately clear if this is uncountable. This is uncountable, fine, but that does not mean that any subset of it is uncountable. But still we will be able to create an injection from here to there, even though this is a subset. Okay, so here is how. So for f in this set, define theta sub f as a map 
from naturals to naturals as theta f of n is this thing this so theta is of course a function from naturals to naturals but check that it is injective it is injective simply because it is an increasing function each fk is a natural number so if you add something it only increases so check that theta k is injective sorry theta f is injective so we get a map from this to all the injective maps from naturals to naturals which take a function to theta f meaning f to theta f and now check that theta is injective it is injective simply because you can recover f from theta f if i give you theta f you can recreate f so that's uh, roughly a reason why this is injective but you can prove it in whatever way you like it's very easy so there is an injection from an uncountable set to this guy and therefore this guy is uncountable and that finishes the proof of this thing this thing meaning the uncountability of this okay uh, let me end with some remarks for any set x of course i mean not any set for any infinite set x we claim that or we we state that this guy is uncountable what is that guy that is all bijections from x to x so this just is a notation for the set of all bijections from x to x uh, it is a fact that if x is infinite then this is uncountable uh, i'm not going to prove it because it will require the use of zorn's lemma or the axiom of choice which we haven't discussed so we will not look at a proof of this in this course maybe in some other course maybe in general topology we will look at it okay so that's wonderful and as a corollary if x is infinite then the set of all the injective maps from x to x and in fact the set of all maps from x to x are also uncountable simply because these are supersets of that so so this is this is i mean we saw both of these for x equals n in the previous slide but this is a much more general phenomenon in fact this general phenomenon does not require this theorem you can just use the previous slide to 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 prove that these two are uncountable immediately all right so i hope this was an interesting lecture as usual like comment share subscribe and i will see you next time